everyone. Um, yeah, here we go. We're coming to the end of the um, AES show for another year. So, thankfully. <laughs> no, it's been a good show. Um, thanks for coming. I'm Martin Dyser. I'm VP of Business Development at uh, Telos Alliance. Also look after the Telos Infinity um, uh, virtual intercom platform as product director. Um, and I'm going to talk about cloud technology and audio in the cloud particularly because of some of the experiences that we've had over the last couple of years developing cloud technology within the Telos Alliance. Although I'm not specifically talking about our products, uh, I'm talking about um, the, the industry in general really. So, where's my little clicker? There we go. So the subjects that I'm going to cover is, first one is just taking the temperature, so a, a little bit of a look at where the industry is right now with respect to um, uh, TV, particularly uh, video production in the cloud and where audio is in comparison to the advances that have been made by our, our, our brethren in the, in the video space. Um, methodology for connecting audio within the cloud and from on-prem to the cloud, the technology that's available to do that. Um, security within, within audio in the cloud, which is a very important subject to a lot of people. I'll just touch on that a little bit. Uh, latency, uh, what latency needs to people, it comes up a lot in conversations um, using cloud audio. Is it, is it impossible to use because of latency issues? I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit and why it's not quite so daunting as you might think. Uh, and then finally, what is a hybrid workflow uh, when I talk a little bit about uh, ways to solve latency issues. So, okay, first thing, taking the temperature of the, uh, of, of the marketplace. Well, we've lived in, a, um, I guess the last decade probably, uh, companies within the video space have been, have been developing um, video production technology, whether that's playout systems, transmission, or whether it's full-blown um, full-blown products for making shows in the cloud and some of those uh, th those products have come from well-known brands people like Grass Valley with their AMP system or with Viz RT uh, with Viz Vector, uh, Panasonic Connect with Kairos, uh, Ross Production Cloud um, and, and smaller companies, smaller software companies like a company called Grabio that, which, that, that, that are, uh, are existing in that space. And Riedel have just bought a company called Simply Live, who uh, are Riedel known for Intercom primarily, but Riedel have just bought Simply Live, who's a video cloud production technology supplier. But the one thing I think we can say with a, a, a degree of um, candor is that the solutions that have been brought on board by those video um, uh, technology companies um, for using audio and communications uh, are functional, they work, they do a job, but they do a job uh, unspectacularly. Um, they're, they're not necessarily specialist companies in the audio space and when video companies build audio solutions sometimes they, they, they leave a little bit be, be behind. I think this is being recorded. Um, so you'd probably have to edit that bit out, Terry, but um, I'm, 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 being, I'm being polite. But, but the industry tells us, uh, particularly our customers tell us, that they want companies with audio expertise to jump into the cloud market and start developing better products. And that is happening, uh, but it's not really there yet. Um, so talking about audio, um, cloud mixer technology is, is, is in its infancy for sure. Um, now our friends at Audio Tonics um, over, over the other side of the hall here, um, they're working on a, a project called the New, New Heights Project to develop an audio, uh, um, audio production facility in the cloud. And there are other brands doing that. But what the pandemic did um, is it accelerated uh, movement into that space. If we, if we can, it seems like an age ago, but if we sort of hark back to the pandemic, it, almost like it never happened, but we had that time when, uh, when we, we would see the weather presenter or the news presenter presenting the show from their kitchen. Or we might have read an article somewhere that, somebody, uh, that an A1 uh, sound supervisor was, was mixing the Premier League from their, from their garage or, or something like that. Those, those things were happening. And the, and, and the way to get that to work was, was sort of a make do with what you have um, in terms of technology. People were, People were remote controlling their Calrec back end, back at NBC, from a remote, remote location, but they were still using the monolithic 
elements of, of, um, of their audio technology um, because the facilities just didn't exist in the cloud. And those people that were building um, cloud, cloud um, workflows using products like Grass Valley Amp that, that had the video production kind of sewn up and wanted to use a, uh, an audio mixing console, they were turning to products like Reaper, which is cloud deployable, or they were using Waves MX. Uh, they were using a technology that's not really built for TV, but can be adapted. Um, um, uh, or they were adapting their hardware, like I'm saying, you know, with, with products like um, uh, like using CalRec remotely. So it was a bit of a, a bit kludgy, let's be polite about it. For Intercom, which is close to my heart, this is where I come from, um, we launched the Telus Infinity VIP system very quickly in 2020. It became part of the Grass Valley AMP system and it developed, a, uh, it, it delivered a, a fully fledged uh, broadcast audio intercom system for cloud production. Um, and it's proved to be very successful, but we were one of the few companies who made that 180 degree R&D um, and uh, manufacturing change and moved over to build um, complementary software systems to work with our hardware. Unity also have been around for a long time and their, their, they, their uptick of, of Unity increased um, uh, incredibly. Um, but there were some software uh, centric companies out there in the industry building some really cool audio stuff. So those four slides there represent four companies that uh, emerged. The one on the left is a company called Salsa Sound from Salford University in London, uh, sorry, in Manchester. And Salsa um, came out of a, a, a PhD project from one of their students who created a, um, a, an AI generated mixing console that can be deployed in the cloud um, that solved some of the problems around uh, pandemic sports productions where stadiums were empty um, and it was an intelligent way of putting uh, uh, crowd noise back into the production uh, by using um, using files from different different teams so you could create the stadium atmosphere uh, with, without actually having an audience there. And their products have moved on um, in leaps and bounds and their, their technology is very, very usable. Um, second one is Llama, Lean and Mean Audio out of the Netherlands. Um, they were building uh, products primarily for, for commentary and voiceover. Again, cloud deployable and, and very, very, um, uh, very, very successful um, in their own kind of small way uh, within, within the pandemic and, and their products have been growing. So the other ones are a, a company called um, On Hertz, another, uh, another brand who came up with a cloud deployable mixer. And also Harrison, um, who are now part of the Audiotonics group, came out with a product called the Virtual Broadcast um, Mixer, which was uh, one of their, uh, which was a software version of one of their, um, one of their film consoles, I believe. Uh, and, and that that picked up um, some plaudits and became uh, bec became something that was used. But very much a slow ramp up from uh, from the bigger brands of hardware technology into this space, and that's that's still the case now. We're waiting to see what uh, what what the, the big brands bring to market. So from that we go on to where you do have usable products. How do you connect audio into the cloud? Um, and it's not easy. Um, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of transport mechanisms out there for connecting uh, video um, to, uh, uh, from on-prem to the cloud for backhauling video, video signals, whether, whether compressed or uncompressed. And we've kind of been piggybacking on the back of that to some extent. So the NDI, Network Device Interface, that was, was produced by NewTek probably over a decade ago now, um, is a means to transport compressed video or uncompressed video with uh, with, with audio, uh, audio channels and is used by a lot of news organizations around the world. Uh, but we found it was a very useful tool for transporting audio as well. We had customers ask for it um, and we, we did a very quick job of implementing NDI into our products and we found that a lot of companies are doing that as well. So NDI audio is moving in its own right. Um, it can support up to 256 discrete channels of synchronized audio per NDI video stream. It's generally marketed as being a 16-channel device, but it's actually 256 if you dig in under the hood and, and there are companies using all of those channels. Um, New Tech have dedicated audio tools 
as do our friends at Lean and Mean Audio at Llama. Um, Avsono is a Mexican-based company producing some great NDI tools, NDI gateways and things like that, purely for handling audio, for, trans, uh, for, for transcoding Dante into NDI, um, uh, Maddy into NDI and other things like that. And also Sienna, who's a, a software company out of the UK. So there are brands coming into the space and developing NDI um, audio only tools for the likes of us uh, and customers like yourselves. Um, NDI can support either compressed or uncompressed audio. So in our space where we are with, particularly with, um, uh, with communications products, uncompressed audio is fine. We don't have to be running at 48K 24 bit all the time. So there are multiple vendors that are starting to support NDI, including ourselves. Um, and I think you'll see NDI um, really becoming popular for audio transport. When we started with our cloud products, we, we, our starting point was to use WebRTC using the Opus codec. Um, and Opus is, is particularly useful for a number of reasons. Um, it, it's a compression algorithm. Um, it's, it can support, um, or WebRTC, sorry, can support transport from G711, G722, but also Opus. Um, so we use WebRTC as a transport mean for our voice comms. Um, it's open source. It's ideal for use in web applications, which is what we produce. Um, and uh, it has variable bit rates all the way from down to 6 kilobits per second and right the way up to 510 kilobits per second. So it can handle challenging environments where the network bandwidth might not be very, uh, very, uh, very high. Um, but, uh, and it can also handle um, program quality uh, um, audio streams, both mono and stereo. Um, and with forward error correcting as, correction as well and variable bit rate. So you can be pretty confident that your audio is going to get there. Um, SRT is starting to take off. Uh, if you were able to go around the NAB halls over the last couple of days, you will have seen a number of companies that are part of the SRT alliance. And again, SRT carries audio within it. Um, so where audio is associated with video and it needs to make its way onto a mixing console, uh, then and having an SRT interface is a very useful thing to have. And we get asked for that as well. Um, AWS, um, well, I mean, AWS obviously one of the premium suppliers of private and public cloud technology and, and, and space to run your systems on. So it's no surprise that they've come up with um, methodologies to help us transport audio around the cloud. Um, and AWS Transit Gateway is a, is a tool that they, they launch that we work with. And it gives you the ability to build um, uh, uh, gateway connections between uh, VPCs, between virtual private clouds, between, um, between EC2s, uh, uh, elastic computing instances, computers in the cloud basically, allows you to connect between them. It's something you can't do with AS67 multicast unless you have a, a backbone technology like Transit Gateway. Um, that's one of the, uh, one of the utopias of, of working in the cloud that we all want to get to, is the ability to build local area networks that support PTP clock and allow us to um, freely transport audio over IP throughout the cloud. But we can't do it just yet, and Transit Gateway is a, is a method that solves that. It acts as a cloud ro uh, router or router, um, it's highly scalable. You can handle up to 256 channels within a single instance of Transit Gateway. So for our customers that are building bigger and bigger systems, Transit Gateway has been a, a, a real plus for us and it's something that we're getting a lot of use out of. AWS have also launched uh, Direct Connect as a service. So Direct Connect is a means to um, um, a trunk between data centers. So if you're uh, a national broadcaster or an international broadcaster and you may have different instances of, of production technology in the cloud in different continents, you need to mute, move media between them, then Direct Connect is a tool that AWS um, uh, supports that enables you to do that. Um, it enables you to build hybrid networks between on-prem and cloud as well, so you can go Direct Connect uh, from your on-prem bare metal services to the to the cloud, which is super important in hybrid models, which we'll get onto in a little while. 
and they've also launched something called CDI, um, which I must confess I don't know an awful lot about, but it's, a, it's an Amazon's own uh, video transport mechanism that supports audio and metadata as well. Probably not a very efficient way of just, just um, transporting audio, um, but for video that has audio embedded in it, it th then it becomes important. And then finally, um, our friends at Ordinate, um, the Dante Connect is a, is a technology that's, that was uh, first presented, I think, at NAB this year. And Dante Connect um, is perfect for people using Dante ecosystems because it allows them to, to bridge between their on-prem Dante networks and the cloud. It uses the Dante virtual sound card um, and, a, and, and Dante Connect gateway um, and it provides a means for you to um, create a, a, a trunk of uncompressed audio up to 256 channels per connection uh, between uh, cloud and ground. So Dante Connect, I think, is, is going to be very successful. Um, the point there being it's uncompressed audio transport, so uh, perfect for, uh, for program, for, for getting your microphones from the, from the stadium to the cloud if you're going to mix, mix in the cloud. Um, not uncompressed audio, not necessary um, uh, for, for comms per se, but certainly for program content, it, it's a, an important development. Um, and of course, as you, anybody in, in this, this business knows, Dante is ubiquitous, so, so many companies and so many thousands of devices out there. Um, okay, so security in the cloud. What I'd say about security, um, more than anything else, and our CTO said this to me this week when I was just putting this slide deck together, and this sort of element of the of, of the technology is definitely not my strong suit, but um, Greg Shea, who's one of the one of the founders, along with Andreas of, of AS67, um, he said, "Well, just use industry best practices. Any security you would use for your websites, um, for any of your data that you're holding in the cloud, use the same best practices for your audio, because after all, audio is just data, or, or for media, it's the same. It's just data. Um, so don't do anything you wouldn't do." Look at private cloud architectures. Look at using software-defined networks that you have control of. Um, so take ownership of your, your facility and don't rely um, necessarily on, on other services that you can't control the security of. Encryption is super important. So encryption is mandated as part of WebRTC. Um, so 128 or 256-bit encryption is built into the technology when you use WebRTC. And it uses protocols using DTLS and using SRTP. Um, so you're not going to get hacked, you're not going to get decoded, you're not going to get eavesdropped if you use, um, you use WebRTC. Um, standard web security protocols when using firewalls as well, important things to, to, to work into your solutions. So, um, using, using ICA frameworks like STUN and TURN servers. We use STUN for, uh, for connection management between users of our intercom systems um, and the server, and, and also using TURN as a tra traversal relay for use with NAT um, where necessary, but not always the case. And, and one of the problems is actually adding TURN does add a degree of latency to the, to the technology. So that's something um, that we use um, when necessary. We would also thoroughly recommend if you're looking at products in the cloud and you're looking at um, means to host them that you look for solutions that have had independent pen tests or penetration tests. So these are third party companies that will come in and, and they'll, they'll test your system and work out whether what, the li what your liability is for being hacked. They'll do that for a website, but they'll also do it for our technology. Cheers. Um, and, and we as a company have gone through AWS's um, uh, foundational technical review to look at our, um, our, our products, and both our Altus um, Cloud Mixer and our VIP Intercom system have both passed um, AWS's uh, foundational technical review, which is a kind of rubber stamp um, to say you've used best practices to build your, your products, they're secure, um, and, and they are uh, very much fit for purpose. Latency. Okay, so can latency be conquered? Well, latency can be a problem for a number of, a number of reasons within, within TV production. 
One of the most obvious ones is where you've got a group of, of, of presenters, maybe the, the, a sports game, you know, a soccer match or a, um, a, a football match or something like that. You've got the four people standing there holding their microphones. They've got an earpiece in. They've got one ear that hasn't got an earpiece. They can hear each other acoustically um, just for the fact they're standing next to each other. They can hear each other electronically in their ears. Um, and if, if there's a latency um, of more than 10, 20, 30 milliseconds between them and the audio technology that they're connecting to, they will get an echo um, which will make their jobs particularly difficult. They wouldn't expect to be able to hear themselves because their IFB will have a mix minus. But if they can hear the people around them and they're getting um, a delay between them, then latency can be a problem. So you want to mitigate against that. Ditto for the production crew. If your crew is sat uh, at a production desk using in front of the technology and they have open, uh, an open ca uh, head headphone on one, one ear, and a, and a boom microphone, and they can hear the rest of the production staff um, over, over comms, um, both acoustically and electronically, then latency is going to be a problem for them because they will be hearing everything twice or more. When video and audio cuts are fast, so syncopated production, that kind of thing, if you're cutting um, audio and video on a, on a beat, for example, Maybe you're making a TV show in the 70s, I don't know. But uh, if you are doing something fast, then it becomes impossible if, there's, if, if, if you're, you're cutting a transition 100 milliseconds behind the event. Um, and al also, when audio is out of sync with video, which is, a, which is something you have to work with with cloud production, particularly, you have to be very conscious of sync. Uh, if it isn't, then there's a perception of, of latency even then when it, it isn't necessarily a problem. If it's out of sync, you feel uncomfortable with the workflow. Um, when it's not a problem, where it can be reduced to manageable levels, when the talent is out of shot. So if you're voicing over, well, we call it off-tube commentary in the, in, the, in the UK, but if you're voicing over, if you're doing a, um, a second language tr a translation of an event, you're the commentator doing the Spanish feed for the Premier League, latency is no issue. Um, if, if, your, if your comms and your audio um, are not feeding your own voice back, you're just voicing over the international sound, the, the, the bare mix of the, of, of the stadium, then, then it's of no consequence whatsoever. If production crew, crews are working remotely, um, then Cloud Intercom can supply much faster um, uh, audio than, uh, um, than, than you'll ever get with a cell phone or anything relying on on cell technology. If you come over to our booth just over there, 734, we can give you a demonstration because we have a system connected to AWS and we have various connections uh, from um, hardware panel connected directly to AWS or a belt pack or, a, or, or even a cell phone. I've got a panel on my phone in my pocket. Um, we can show you the different latency issues and why it isn't really a problem. Um, the source is close enough. Um, so cloud doesn't always mean on an AWS instance somewhere off in uh, um, somewhere off in the ether um, it, it can also mean uh, an on-prem server a bare metal server um, and and it, it's about choosing the right technology for your workflow choosing the right solution and if that means that the, your server is on-prem and it's it's in your rack um, you're, you're going to have absolutely minimal latency um, and, and you're going to have a solution that uh, uh, will work for local production as well as, uh, as remote production and also when audio is in sync with, uh, with video. Um, but if you were using um, cloud production systems it might be a good idea um, for your talent, your production crews to use he uh, closed headsets rather than open. Um, other ways to reduce cloud latency, well I touched on this in the last slide, use on-premise uh, or private cloud where, where more appropriate. So we haven't encouraged our, our customers to move to the cloud when it's been obviously the wrong thing to do. Um, when multiple members of the team are sat in the same room with each other, we will certainly suggest that the preferred route would be not to do that. Um, Localised audio um, monitoring and intercom for adjacent talent. 
So one of the slides I'll move on to will show how to build a hybrid environment where that's, a, that's not an issue. And also minimize the distance when using cloud. So um, if, if you were working in a particular re region, if you're working in the New York region, you're not going to use an AWS cloud in, in instance in California, for example. But our own tests, our wraparound from Cleveland uh, Telos HQ um, to Virginia, where we've installed some of our AWS instances, 15 milliseconds each way, which is not going to cause anybody a problem. Um, ensure video and audio are always synchronous. Okay, so that's latency. Um, now, what is a hybrid workflow? Um, we hear this talked about all the time, and I guess most of our customers have some form of hybrid workflow. So it's generally where on, on some elements of technology exist on-prem and some exist in the cloud. So a good example is where um, video and audio production te technology is, is deployed in a cloud instance, um, and the, the intercom is local. We've seen that one quite a lot, and it may be because uh, a customer has a legacy system from Riedel or Clearcom or RTS, um, and they um, they want to keep using that. But the rest of the production backbone is in is in the cloud, so they will have to transport audio from to and from the intercom system up to the cloud. They'll have to use something like Opus or maybe use NDI, um, but um, they want to maintain local local comms. Um, intercom could be a combination and, and this is something that sort of leads on a little bit from the previous point. A lot of our customers have got uh, matrix based legacy comm systems but they want the benefit of being able to um, serve their remote users, their remote teams with virtual panels so they actually tack one of our systems onto the back of a matrix and use it to extend uh, their comms capability. Or when the audio technology is, uh, is in, installed in the cloud, but the bulk processing for audio, the microphone, the endpoints, um, IFBs, the presenters are all on-prem, maybe at the, state, at the stadium, then you kind of end up with a, a small local mixer at the stadium and a larger back end for the bulk of the processing in the cloud. So the show is, is mixed in the cloud, uh, but, but local sources are, are submixed at the stadium. So that's, a, that's pretty typical. So these uh, last few slides are diagrams um, just showing you some of, the, some of the typical workflows that we've seen. This one shows our Infinity VIP comm server in the cloud and shows how that can be used to serve intercom users who may be remote. Uh, they might be um, uh, working in a bureau on the other side of the world, for example, um, they might be an affiliate, they might be on trucks, um, they even be working from home. And we connect that intercom system back to any audio production technology that may be on-prem at, at HQ or in, in the venue. So we, 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 we trunk everything back in this particular case using Opus. Conversely, if you flip this around and you put the, um, our intercom server on-prem, then you would have local AS67 connectivity to that audio backbone technology, uh, the mixing console, uh, a legacy intercom system, perhaps, hopefully one of our hardware intercom systems. Uh, but if cloud production technology is, is, is features in it, then we would typically use NDI or Opus to connect between the cloud and, uh, and, and the, the video production technology from our friends at Grass Valley or, or VizRT or Panasonic or Ross, whoever that might be. Um, so either of those methodologies may work depending on your particular workflow and what you're trying to achieve. And then this, this slide is, I guess, a, a slightly more illustra illustrative in it's just suggesting um, that uh, using, using a cloud comm system uh, for venue comms is a, a very practical way of working, um, especially if you're doing Remy production and you're, you're using your um, legacy equipment at your broadcast center um, to mix the game, then you can absolutely minimize the amount of equipment that's sent to the stadium. And then finally, this one is a slide I borrowed from our friends at Audiotonics, uh, and this, um, this is public domain, so I'm not 
I'm not showing any secrets to what, uh, at all, but this is, uh, this is a slide which shows their New Heights DSP engine, which is their, uh, their fourth plumbing uh, console in the cloud, um, and how it can be used uh, on this particular slide with the, with the Calrec Argo um, deployed um, in a production control room, remote controlling the back end of the New Heights DSP. But as I understand it, you could use the Calrec Argo, you could use an SSLT series or a Tempest um, uh, to control the same back end. Um, but equally on here, you can see uh, the connectivity on the right hand side um, between the video production technology over here. Um, and, uh, and also down at the event local I.O., local processing, local IFBs and local microphones. Um, so that's the kind of model I think that my previous slides represent, uh, but that's more specific to, uh, um, to what I suspect will become one of the leading solutions from, con from a console manufacturer. Okay, um, that's me done, unless there are any any questions, you can come and see me over there or I can take a question or two.